with the Cold War ending, the United States was kind of left as like the last great power, so to speak. It was a time when the United States sort of was the last standing superpower. And so the United States is kind of uh, emerge as sort of a world leader. Um, one thing that the United States does as far as post-Cold War goals is foreign aid. So we're going to send military equipment. We're going to send civilian equipment. Uh, we're going to send humanitarian aid, so that's things like food, medicine, clothing, um, to support human rights and free governments around the world. Okay, so military aid, foreign aid. Uh, George H.W. Bush is president from 1989 to 1993. It's during his presidency that the Soviet Union collapses and the Cold War against communism ends. The Soviet Union breaks up. Yugoslavia collapses, and all of those different uh, Bal uh, Balkan states, you know, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro, Croatia, um, Kosovo, they all separate into separate ethnic states, um, and a lot of violence occurs there. Um, uh, thousands die in former Yugoslavia in something called ethnic cleansing, which is just sort of another way of saying genocide. They were trying to wipe each other out. Uh, the U.S. went to war with Iraq for the first time in 1990. Iraq invaded its oil-rich neighbor, Kuwait. Uh, the United States demanded the Iraqis withdraw from Kuwait. Iraq refused. So the United States um, went on the offensive and in a very efficient and successful war, expelled the Iraqis from Kuwait um, and, and captured large numbers of the Republican Guard. And this was the Gulf War in 1991. It's the first time women officially serve in a combat role, but not the first time women actually serve in combat. Women remember all the way back, back to the revolution, women have saw, seen combat, but they're officially in a combat role in the Gulf War. Guys, this is a positive thing. Um, <clears throat> uh, when I was in the in the military, uh, 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 you know, I fought side by side and saw women serve with distinction. I wouldn't be here today had it not been for a female F-15 pilot that I'll never know. I know I'll never know who she is or where she lives or what she's doing now. All I know is we were in a bad spot in Afghanistan. Uh, we called for air support. An F-15 Strike Eagle came and the pilot, the voice on the radio was female. And she did her job, she did it well, and I wouldn't be here today if she had. So I am a firm believer that women deserve to be able to fight in combat if they want to. All right? Speaking from experience, um, under the Clinton administration, we create the North American Free Trade Agreement, which creates um, a $1.7 trillion economic benefit for the United States in the form of increased trade with Mexico. We see relations with Vietnam improve. Um, under the Clinton administration, we also seek to end apartheid. Apartheid was segregation. Remember segregation? Except this was segregation in South Africa. Um, and so we sanctioned South, um, South Africa, and eventually, thanks to the work of Nelson Mandela, um, South Africa ended apartheid, ended segregation, and so we lifted our U.S. sanctions against South Africa. Um, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization that I talk about, we sent forces into former Yugoslavia to stop the ethnic cleansing, the genocide that was going on there. This is a very um, conflict-ridden part of the world, and there's still ethnic strife there today. Take, take a second and think about this. A couple of units ago, I talked about World War I. World War I started when Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated by a, a Serbian nationalist, a member of a, of a nationalist group called the, uh, the Black Hand. Okay, And this happened in former Yugoslavia. So we started the 20th century with war in the Balkans. All right, and we ended the 20th century with war in the Balkans. And that's not a coincidence. This is an area with lots of different ethnic groups who have a history of not getting along. They were forced to live in one country under the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union broke up, Yugoslavia broke up too. All right, 
um, from 2001 to 2010, George W. Bush was president. And probably one of the most consequential things that happened during his presidency are the 9-11 terror attacks. I was a junior in high school when this happened. We were, we were at school and um, like all of these news reports were coming in that these planes um, hit the World Trade Center, that planes um, hit the Pentagon. Um, one plane went down in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. I had a, a, the chance to go and visit. There's a memorial there. If you ever get a chance, go out and see the 9-11 memorial um, in Shanksville in Pennsylvania. You won't regret it. It's a very sad, very sombering thing. But essentially what happened was these, um, these events occurred, and the people on board this plane knew it was going to happen. And so um, they, did, they realized that it wasn't a hijacking, that the folks were going to take over the plane and fly it into something. And so they fought back, got control of the plane, and the plane crashed in this field, and they died. Um, and they died heroes. Um, it, it was a, uh, it, it's hard to describe. The teachers stopped teaching. Uh, they put the TV on. And for the rest of the school day, and the school day after that, and the school day after that, we just watched the news. Everybody was just so struck by it, um, and and um, this had a lot to do with me deciding to join the military when I graduated in 2003, uh, for better or for worse. Um, and as a result, as a direct result of the 9/11 terror attacks, we went to Afghanistan, which I personally participated in several times, and the war in Iraq, which my brother was in the war in Iraq. So when I was in Afghanistan, I worked with special forces. I was a dog handler. And deployed to Afghanistan. I went to places like Kanduz province, Afghanistan. Uh, I went to Kaust province in Afghanistan with my dog searching for IEDs. The war in Iraq was called OEF, that's Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Enduring Freedom was the war in Afghanistan. Um, we still have, as of the time that I'm recording this video, we still have troops in Afghanistan. We went to Afghanistan right after the 9 11 terror attacks. And it's now 2020, and we still have troops there. Um, I went to Afghanistan myself in 2008 and 2010. So that conflict has been going on for some time. All right. And I already did this Kennedy address. That concludes the Cold War lecture. Make sure that you guys do the discussion board. Make sure you guys read the narrative and answer the questions. And make sure you guys fill out the guided notes.